Okay, so we're going to go into this just like we do with all the other performance-based questions, just like we look for it on the test. So read the instructions based on the scenario. Use the drop-down selector to securely set the employee's email clients on the CompTIA network, then answer the troubleshooting questions. Okay, so we're setting up email clients. I guess this is a little more accurate here. Application, so we're setting up email clients like, like uh, Outlook or you know something like that to connect to the mail server, the CompTIA mail server. Now let's look at this scenario. As a systems administrator for your organization, you are in charge of helping employees set up their email clients to securely access internet-based email server, comptiamail.com. All right, that's important. Problems will inevitably arise due to human error, so you may need to troubleshoot if your issues after initial setup. All right, so the only useful piece of information we got here was comptiamail.com. Okay, so incoming mail. Let's take a look at this network diagram. CompTIA network. All right, we have uh, some clients here. It looks like a tablet and a, a client going through a firewall to the email server. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, let's take a look. What are our selections here for incoming mail? IMAP server. Okay, it gives us a bunch of different possible uh, names here. And then require SSL, IMAP, secure port. Okay. Well, this one, this one seems pretty straightforward so far. I gotta say. Uh, so the IMAP server. This is gonna be first off. You start with IMAP dot whatever the mail server is, and that should be it. So if it's IMAP, it should be IMAP dot comptia mail dot com since comptia mail is our mail server. So imap.comptmail.com that should be right let's see requires ssl it should you know we're using it should have a secure connection and this is something you'd want to assume here even though it's not specifically stated that we're using a secure connection but whenever you make any connections on comptia.com if you go to comptia's website it's a secure connection using transfer layer security so most email clients have this this option to require SSL, even though the technology that would be used would be TLS. It still says requires SSL. Remember, SSL was before TLS. All right, and then the port for that, that should be, remember your port number is 993 for IMAP. So IMAP secure is 993, and that's IMAP using transfer layer security. Okay, so outgoing mail, we have an SMTP server. So we have, uh, SMT IMAP and then SMTP. So SMTP server is going to be very similar to IMAP, but it's going to be smtp.comptiamail.com instead of imap.comptiamail.com. We should say that this requires authentication. <clears throat> this is an email client on the host machine. So it would have to authenticate to the mail server. And it should require transfer layer security and secure sockets layer. Okay, so that should all be right. Now, what would the SSL port be and what would the TLS or start TLS be? Now, these are two different technologies, essentially. They're different versions of encryption. TLS is what we use today. And there's also start TLS, which is another way to uh, secure email traffic similar almost identical to TLS, but not quite. All right, and those are gonna have uh, different protocols, numbers, so you wanna remember what your protocol number is gonna be for SMTP, okay, and you should, you should know that. Remember, that's gonna be 465 for SMTP, to so use SMTP over transport layer security, and then start, or TLS. This is gonna be uh, not as well known this would be 587. So if you don't remember that one off the top of your head, that's okay. That should be correct. This one's pretty straightforward as far as performance based questions go. If you get this on the exam, I think you should be happy. Because <laughs> really, you just, most of these, you know, each one of these drop downs is going to be a point for yes, requiring this, and you only have two choices. And then you just have to know your port numbers here. All right, what's this? So some employees are receiving the error. The certificates CN name doesn't match the past value. What could be the issue? 
Okay, so this is referring to the domain name for uh, this right here. What, what name the email client's trying to reach, what domain. So sometimes what can happen is, you know, if you're using, you know, say you have an email client configured for POP, you know, Post Office Protocol, or POP uh, Secure, POP3 Secure. Then when you have that, and you're trying to connect to an IMAP email server, you would have that type of error. So perhaps, let's see if that's a, an issue here. Employees digital certificates aren't installed. That's not gonna give, that's, that's a red herring, that, that's a pretty good one. The certificate C and name doesn't match the pass value. So if you were gonna guess, I think a lot of people would guess this one. The employees used pop.comptml.com. This one sticks out to me as a possible answer. SSL is not enabled. And that would not generate that value right there. And the email server is not. Okay, so in this one, I think you're using the wrong, um, wrong type of email service. So I'm gonna say pop.comta.com, okay? Let's see if that's correct. Okay, we, we did it. We got it all correct here. Let's see what they say about that last one. If a user receives an error with a certificate stating the certificate CN name does, doesn't match the pass value, the user has input the wrong subdomain, right? The canonical name, the CN uh, records, point a domain or subdomain to another domain. And that's what, it's talking about this right here, the, the prefix here, smtp.comptia.com. So here we had the employee using pop.comptiamail.com which would be the canonical name doesn't match the pass value. The pass value being either SMTP or IMAP. Okay. Now, one other thing to note with this, remember IMAP will allow client uh, changes done at the client to reflect the server. So if you delete us, uh, an email on your email client on your laptop, the server will delete that email. Okay. With post office protocol or POP, it's a read-only relationship. On your email client, you can only read the emails. You can't make modifications that would reflect on the server. Just keep that in mind. It doesn't come up in this question, but it's good to know. Okay, and let's just read the rest right here. Uh, yep, IMAP Secure has to use port 993. And then when securing outgoing mail, we have to use ports 465 and 587. This is because outgoing mail is requiring a simple mail transfer protocol, SMTP server. And to use the server securely, you need to use port 465 for SSL and 587 for TLS or Stark TLS. Okay. And then users must authenticate to the mail or the mail would be vulnerable to unintended user access. Yep. Yeah, and port 465 is... It's considered deprecated, but it's still um, it's still assigned by the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, IANA. So it's still used in a lot of email clients. So you'll still see, and a lot of email clients will still say SSL, like requires SSL, even though TLS is used. So a lot of these terminology is still being used.